I'm delighted we all survived 2023. Let's hope there is a 2024. I would suspect that next year, things are not gonna look as happy as they look here in December of 2023. Could be a gigantic war, I hope it's not. The Red Sea is a major choke point for the world for many, many things, including oil. So, no, I, I hope everybody's watching it. The main worry that I, as I look out the window and look at the world, I see that more and more people are getting angry with each other, and that often leads to war, trade war, if nothing else. But they sometimes lead to shooting wars, and certainly nobody wins shooting wars, but they certainly do enormous damage when they occur. Historically, the year before an election in the U.S. is usually a good year in the stock market because the, everybody, all the politicians know the election's coming. They try to get everybody happy for the coming election. So it happened again. We had a good year, and now we're going to have an election. I think we're going to have an election. I hope we are. I don't say that with any seriousness, other than the fact that human beings do strange things throughout history. Even American human beings do strange things. So, no, I fully expect to be voting next of November. Well, America's always had elections, even during wartime, even during the war between the states. So I suspect we will have elections again. The U.S. printed staggering amounts of money. I don't think any central bank has ever printed as much as they did. So of course things feel good right now. Well, the Japanese also have printed staggering amounts of money, probably more than they ever have before. So with, between Japan and America printing a lot of money, you know, those are two gigantic economies with a lot of money being printed, a lot of people having a good time. Nearly always the year before an election in the U.S. is a good year in the stock market. It was again this year. I would suspect that next year will start to show problems. I already see some of the warning signs. You know, you see some stocks go up every day. The, the list is getting narrower and narrower. You have new people coming into the market who've never been in the market before. They think it's easy. They tell all their friends, they've discovered this new thing called the stock market and it's easy to make money. You know, all, we've seen this movie before. This is not my first rodeo. It's been the longest period in American history without an economic problem. So I mean, maybe we're never going to have economic problems again. The politicians in Washington say they've solved all our problems. Well, if you believe them, everything is great. I happen to have read a little bit of history, and I know that's never been the case, so I'm worried. I'm not shorting, not yet, because often at the end there's a blow-off and things are really crazy. You know, in, the, in 1999, I guess it was, the market doubled in six months or something in that blow-off. So we've had blow-offs before. They can be extremely profitable or unprofitable if you're on the wrong side. I am waiting in case there is a blow off, and I hope I'm smart enough to short it if it happens. I worry because, as I said before, it's the longest period in American history without a serious problem. So when the next problem comes, it's got to be very bad. Remember, 2008 was a problem because of too much debt. I look out the window. My gosh, the debt since 2009 has skyrocketed everywhere. Even China has a lot of debt now. China didn't have any debt 25 years ago, and so they could save the world in 2008. But now even China has a lot of debt. China's having problems, which has will lead to more political situations. You know, I guess China has been the not a good market in 2023 because it had the virus and it, it had various and sundry things. Had the housing collapse. I guess the housing collapse in China. It's certainly a notable event. Uh, the Chinese have had a huge bubble, property bubble, for a long time. Beijing tried to stop it before. So whoever stopped it now, it stopped. And that's significant. Okay, I can think I can see the end of the property bubble coming to an end. I think I can see 
some of the problems and the virus coming to an end. And if that's the case, China is not a bad place to invest because it's a huge economy and lots of people working very hard. In Washington, Janet Yellen says, don't worry. We got it under control. We know what we're doing. We have figured out a way to solve all these problems. Now, Janet Yellen has degrees from two famous Ivy League universities, so if you believe her, wonderful. I happen not to believe her. I know we're going to have serious problems, partly exacerbated by Washington, but if you believe her, bye, bye, bye. There's no one thing. I mean, we the press talks about one thing, but these things accumulate over, over time. More and more small things turn into big things, and the next thing you know, it's on the evening news. And everybody says, oh my God. If you look back at 2007, 2008, you know, Iceland went bankrupt. If anybody knew, they didn't care. But it was the first, uh, one of the first steps along the way till eventually Lehman Brothers went bankrupt and we all said, oh my gosh, look what just happened. But Bear Stearns had gone bankrupt a few months before, et cetera. These things don't happen with one day with one, one event. I know where the inflation is not finished. Markets, you know, go up, they correct, they go up, they correct. That's what's happened with inflation. Things feel better right now, and they are better right now, but no, inflation is not finished, and we're going to have more of it, and it's going to be serious. I hope you're worried. The Bank of Japan has been buying shares. Uh, they've been passing laws to encourage people to invest. All of these things have happened before. You know, there are reasons to think that Japan may go up. Now, Japan has horrible problems. You know, Japan's had a declining population for 15 years now. The debt is skyrocketing. Unless something happens, there's not going to be a Japan in 50 years. The cheapest asset that I can see in 2023 is commodities. Uh, you know, silver is down 60% from its all-time high, etc. But most assets, bonds are a bubble, property in many countries is a bubble, stocks are forming, getting ready for a bubble. No, I'm, I don't see any cheap asset classes except commodities. Agriculture is very depressed, have been fundamental problems in agriculture, which usually leads to a change. So if I were looking at any specific area, I would get out a list of the agricultural commodities and start looking for opportunities. That's where I see the best opportunity. I mean, gold's at an all-time high. I'm not the only one who knows that. Oil's been very strong, et cetera, et cetera. Sugar is not very strong. Look, all of us peasants know when there's a serious catastrophe, you better have some gold and silver in the closet. So I do. But I might running out and buying gold or silver now. No, I'm mainly watching because I certainly own enough of both of those. But everybody should have some gold and silver. Let's say, if a crisis comes, you want to have gold and silver.